again, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to introduce the next speaker. Ms. Kathy Fangutu was born in American Samoa, but raised in Hilo and Puna. In 1995, she graduated from Hilo High School and will be the second in her family to complete a bachelor's degree. She has a younger sister who just recently graduated with a BA in history at Chaminade. You'd never guess, you'd never guess though that this vibrant, charismatic, and determined woman once did not do so well in school. In fact, as Kathy tells it, initially she came to school because it was something to do. She didn't take it too seriously and was in and out a few times. But it wasn't until she had her children that she began to take it more seriously. And now she tells her three-year-old and her 10-year-old that they don't have any choice but to go to college. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Kathy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Our presentation is called Couponing with a Purpose, and I work with the Lady Raiders rugby team on, in Kali, Oahu. Um, does anybody here know what rugby is? The sport of rugby? Okay, <laughs> nobody's familiar with the sport of rugby. It's similar to football, only thing there's no pads on you, and they hit a lot harder. <laughs> Before I get to my terms, if there's anybody in this room that came here to learn how to coupon, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, but if one day it, this inspires you to learn how to coupon, and maybe it'll show you a way to help others, benefit others through your knowledge of coupon. So the first term that I like to uh, define is called coupon. Um, it's a voucher entitling the holder to a discount for a certain product. Or couponing is the action to actually collect the coupons and use it towards goods or services. And then the last one is called FICA sesh. It's a slang term. FICA is short for the word FICA gala, which in Samoan, the proper way of saying it is FICA tala. And it's sort of like a curious way to know or Gossip. And then session, sesh is a short version of session. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the women I work with is called Lady Readers Rugby Team, and their mission statement is to advance and promote the health and the well being of women in the community. About the Lady Readers, they were established in 2006. They accept ages 17 and up. And all the members are Pacific Islanders. They come from Samoa, Fiji, Hawaii, and Tonga. Uh, women can do it. Let me explain this. When the women first started, they were supporters of their husbands or their significant others when they would go play rugby or practice at the park. They would take all their kids and they would be like, okay, let's go support daddy. <laughs> and sooner or later, the ladies were like, we can do this too. So they decided to form this team, and until today, they're still going strong. Um, they also come from large families. It ranges from five people in one household all the way up to 12, 13, 14 people. And they also have, um, they live on a limited source of income. Uh, this is a map um, of the Kalihi area that I was working with. Um, just to show you, that's the airport side. If you're, if you're not familiar with Oahu, the airport is on that side, in the middle, and then you have Queen's Hospital here, so it's that area between. And you have Kalihi Valley Homes, or better known as Camp 4. And then you have Kuihil Park Terrace, or KPT, as they like to say. <laughs> and then Kamehameha Homes, which is called Kamehameha Homes. <laughs> and this dot right here, this red dot, is the park that they practice on and they play on. It's called um, Kalakaua District Park. My connection to the women is, I have a family member on the team, she's my older sister, she bosses me around, but she's an amazing woman. And also, I live on public housing, so I felt like I had this connection with them. Um, if you look at this picture, this is of Kuyo Park Terrace, KPT. It's an old picture, they have updated it now. But the reason why I want to show this picture is because this is how it looked when these women grew up on, on the public housing. Then you have Cam 4 over here, and the best housing ever, Halava, where I come from. Thank you. <laughs> and also, um, I connect with them as far as limited income. 
Right now, I'm going to school, and my other half, he works, so he pays for my school. Thank you. <laughs> and so, um, this is one of the other reasons why I want to get into couponing. So my purpose was, of course, to provide couponing education. I want to save their families, the women, money, and use that money to direct it toward other stuff like bills or other household needs that they may have. And then I want to offer additional community service. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention one of the things that makes um, that advance and promote these women is their participation in community service. They do stuff like charity walk, and they also um, paint the buildings that, on the part that they play on. And so I want to offer them additional service options. The things that they give is more service related. What I want to offer them, which they have not done yet, was give some, something tangible that you can give. The first literature source that I, I'm referring to is by Dr. Marshall Solomons, and he's an anthropologist at the University of Chicago, a book called Stone Age Economics. Um, he studied the big men society in Papua New Guinea, and he identified three types of reciprocity. The first one is generalized reciprocity. It's exchange without expectation of immediate return. So for instance, it'll be like parents' relationship to their children, or brother and sister, you know how they give each other, but you don't expect something in return yet. Over time, it'll happen. And then the next one is balance. It's an exchange with, with expected return. The example for this one is like birthday gifts. If you give somebody a birthday gift, later on when it's your birthday, you probably want it back. If they don't give it back, don't ever invite that person back to your party. <laughs> And then negative return, it's an exchange without giving up any value. How I relate to this is it's like a one-way relationship. If that person doesn't give back, then there's nothing gonna come out of it, yeah? The next one is by Dr. Penelope Melissa. She's an associate professor of Samoan Studies at NUS, National University of Samoa. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because she talks about reciprocity and she defines it as all individuals and households in the community help and support each other, each other in time of need. Um, an example for this is the ladies, when they get together with each other, they find what each, the reason why they're so close is because they find what each other needs and they give back to each other. So for instance, if one of the ladies needed a babysitter, oh, can you watch my kid real quick? You know, oh, today I work, can you help me out? They help each other out in that sense. And sometimes one woman doesn't have a car, she needs to go to the store, she needs a ride. They provide that for each other. And um, another example of how they help each other, see back then, before colonial period entered, um, they used to help each other in, in, in sense of services, right? They help each other build houses, help their neighbors. If they go out and fish, they come and give each other fish, you know, they have extras, they help each other. But now you have a cash economy and what you give is money. And so here's the F word that someone probably refers to as the F word in some way. It's called follow beloveds. This is like something where you help another neighbor, but it, it's given such a negative connotation to the word that it's like when you hear that word, especially in some way family, you're like, oh, how much they want? You know, that's all you, that's all you can think about. But I think because it's given such a negative connotation, they don't understand the meaning behind it it's giving back to your neighbor what happened before the colonial period happened, yes? And here's a table, it's just a short table just to show you um, the backgrounds of these women. The average age of the women was around 27. And then the household income was less than 40,000. Household size average was seven. And you might think that number of earners too, that's like, hey, that's normal. It's not normal if you have two earners and there's 12 people in that one house household. It's kind of hard to provide for everybody on a $40,000 income. Yeah. My methodology I used is to, to gather information was um, we did group meetings in the store, in the parking lot, wherever we could meet. Um, interviews, I did a few interviews with the ladies and through phone conversations on the phone, talk stories, and it wasn't one of those, so how do you feel about Cuba? It's like, Girl, how old is your kids? Tell me how many kids you got. You know, I think it's important to establish that, you know, you're, you're not looking at them like, oh, I'm gonna study you. And like, you know, you just wanna establish that relationship like you're close, you know? And then of course, through social media, I think everybody in this room has a Facebook. 
And so that's how these ladies, I, I got to get some information from these ladies. It was an easy thing. Everybody get on their phone, tell me the information, whatever I needed to know. Recruiting. A lot of, uh, most of my classmates, they went out and looked for a community. I was fortunate enough where my community came to me. How they came about, I used to show off, you know, and I keep on and be like, so much I save everybody. They see the news here, like, wow, that's amazing. And they used to contact me and say, can we learn more about this coupon, you know, can help us. And this is exactly, this is an example of a post that I did. And they got attracted, we met up, and let the coupon in begin. Um, another um, activity that we did was organizing. Anybody familiar with TLC's extreme couponing? Anybody watch that? No? Mm -hmm. Well, they really do some extreme stuff. One of them is dumpster dive. So this is their local example of dumpster diving. They literally dump the dump and start go dive. <laughs> and this is, this is an example of how a coupon binder would look or how they would organize a coupon. Yeah. I'm teaching, so a few pictures of us in the store. I'm teaching them. I use the hands-on approach rather than a classroom approach where they would be sitting out and be like, this is a coupon, this is how you use it, let's go. You know, that, that, it wouldn't work. So I use that approach where I take them to the store, I show them the product, I read the coupon to them, I tell them this is how you do it. So they get the visual of it and they can actually do it right there in net with my guidance. <laughs> and then our field trips, this is a picture of the girls and they're looking at the field trips, purchasing some stuff. Um, this is where we put what they learn to action. And one of the important parts of this was parking lot meetings. This is where we just picked whatever spot was open, parked our car, put our stuff on top, and we start sharing stories. And this is where the emotional part of that story came out of each girl, the struggle that I heard that they went through. And it actually adjusted how I worked my um, research because it's according to what they need and how I can help them. And through their personal stories, that's how I work, yeah? And this is where the FICA sash comes out. Um, this, it, it, it's really how you say it. You cannot just say, hey, let's go do a FICA sash. Everybody's very animated in this group that I work with, so they're like, FICA sash! And everybody's like running, grabbing their coffee, doing their things. Everybody's so interested. Because social media is so, like, it's so influenced how people communicate, I think this is a very important part where you're face to face and you get to tell each other your story instead of reading it off of your phone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Why parking lots? Because it's just an open space, you know? Nobody's there. And if people see what you're doing, they're all like, on with these girls why are they so loud why are they talking maybe we can influence them and say hey what's going on you know coupon talk about it learn about it this is one of the activities that I really want to incorporate since they're you know big on community service uh, I wanted them to gain knowledge through giving back for example this is what they did on Wednesday before we came the girls got together the coupon items that they had, and they went to a place called Ponape House, which was my classmate after me will talk about, it's her service learning, Alyssa. And they gave back. And one of the reasons why I kind of want to talk about this with them was because it is so stigmatized that Micronesia is a negative connotation. Yeah, you hear Micronesia like, oh, uh, you know, it's, you can see it in Oahu. So most of the girls have no idea what Micronesians are all about where they're from. They don't know that there's many islands, Ponape, Palau, yet included in this. Just like how Samoa is, they just think Micronesian is just one word for all of them. So I just want them to know that there's other communities out there that you guys can help, not just the you know, Polynesian community. Yeah? And one of my deliverables that I do for them, I created a chat room for them to where if they see a sale going on, like, oh, there's soap on sale, let's go and do this. They just post it instantly, and they can go where that sale is, or they can just talk about it. That's basically what, and I'm gonna offer them continued couponing workshops, where they can just come, and they call me every day. They're like, girl, what are you want about sale? But that's what I'm gonna offer them. It's so much fun with these ladies. My reflection, um, I feel like a, it's like an insider-outsider thing here. 
I felt like an insider because I, I knew the language, I knew how Polynesians flow, how they joke, how they talk about things, what boundaries not to cross. For instance, like you would not see a Samoan sister going buying underwear for their brother or their, you know, it's you don't see that kind of thing, those kind of boundaries, you know. So it was easy for me to get along with these ladies, everything was kind of similar. And it gave me ideas for my next community-based um, research. What I mean by this is, because I started with Pawn and Pay House, now it got me thinking, let me see if there's a Chukis house, a Tonga house, a Fiji house, your house, my house, everybody's house. I just, I just I'm thinking on a, a bigger level now. That's what it helped me do. And then the understanding of personal struggles, like I said, in the parking lot meetings, I didn't expect to feel anything like something on an emotional level, something so personal, yeah? I just wanted to have them learn coupon, give back, but because of their struggles and the way they told me, you know, oh man, my husband lost a job, you know, I can't afford diapers for my baby. I took that information, I went out and looked for those coupons and I told her where these sales are. It allowed me to adjust to what they needed. How would I encourage you to do it? Like I said before, my classmates went out. You know, that's how they went about to find their community. I went about it the other way. I found, I took what I enjoyed and I helped, you know, I incorporated it into the community itself. Because I think it's very important that you enjoy what you do and you're gonna stay focused on it. If you don't enjoy it, you know, you're just gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's enough. But I think it's really important that you like what you do and you help your community with what you enjoy. And be open-minded. What I mean by this is, the biggest block in this was time. And when I say time, it's poly time. I don't know if you guys understand what that means. When you tell them, we were there by three, they'll show up three hours later. They think it's three hours later, so that was one of my biggest things, but I have to be open-minded about that. Not everybody knows how it is, you know? And I know how poly time is, so if you decide to go to somebody that you're not familiar with, just be open-minded and then find ways to challenge yourself. If you're not nervous about what you're doing, then it's not big enough a challenge for you. Just feel, if you feel like, oh man, this is easy, challenge yourself and move, up, move it up a notch and just be like, let's go bigger or go home. <laughs> and that's it, thank you very much. Yeah.